We are done with another month, so here are all the games that I beat for July. So the very first game that I beat was Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. It's continuing the story of Phoenix Wright. He's more seasoned this time around and you get to see that he is helping a lot more clients. The one thing that I liked more about the first game was everything was brand new. It's not a bad game. I love Justice for All, but it's got the same characters over and over again that were witnesses to the crimes. Yes, that does happen, but it's very rare that you're going to see somebody working in one field and then move over and then magically is in another field. I didn't care for that too much. I wanted new characters all the way through, or if there was a same character, that there was a really good reason why. Yes, there was a ton of characters that I saw again, and I'm like, okay, I got it. I didn't mind the actor who was in the show and then magically you saw the actor again. That happens, but to see a couple people are like, nah, I, I could have done without that, but still a great game. I still recommend Phoenix Wright. I love, you know, LA Noir meets anything to do with like crime detective kind of type of games. CSI is my one of my favorite shows, so highly recommend this if you have it. It's still on sale because they're gonna drop a couple more trilogies for Ace Attorney. So if you have not tried any of these Ace Attorney games, get the bundle. You will be spending less for that bundle than if you were to buy them individually. So the next game was Mobile Suit Gundam Seeds Battle Assault for the Game Boy Advance. This is a fighter, but the one thing that I liked that was different than most fighters is they are people in tech suits, battle suits, and so kind of like Transformers, they get into a suit, they put the suit on, and then they can fight with it. It was a cool story, I liked the story, it's basically, depending on who you're playing as, there was like 10 fighters all together. You battle based on the storyline and either have a good fighter or a bad fighter, basically bad fighter. And the fighters go through and they have a sword kind of type of like slash motion and then they have a gun and you also have like a type of flying like a hover motion so you have three gauges to worry about and each one is a different thing that matters there's health then there is I believe it was like your your armor and then you have like how much lev like left you have for your hovering and you have to watch it and you can see the other person's as well so you can see yours and you can see the, the opponents. So it's a very fun fighter. I recommend it if you can find it for the Game Boy Advance. I don't know how much it is going for right now, but I had a fun time playing this one. Now this game was a Sega 32X game that I heard a couple people talk about and I wanted to play it and I finally found a good clean ROM copy that I could play and it's Cosmic Carnage. This fighter is okay, but the frame rate was horrible. I would be fighting and it kind of reminded me of Mortal Kombat Sega CD version. It would drop in frames so bad that sometimes it would just stutter or stop. And so I would be fighting somebody and I pull a combo because I finally figured out a combo after like the second fight. When the combo would happen, it would just slow down to like 10 frames of like it was just horrible so i would wait for the final moment to happen and i'm like i don't know if it's got the whole combo but we're gonna figure it out and so it would freeze or stop and it's an okay fighter as well um some of the people characters creatures don't have battle armor which is weird some do so sometimes you'll pick a character and the battle armor will be there and you can choose like the options of what they are i don't really know what they do like maybe they're more agile but it's an okay fight if, if you can find it for cheap don't pick it up and pay like what it would be going for, for physical copy unless you really are wanting the full set it's not that great it's it's a fighter that it's an okay fighter like if they would have worked on it a little bit more had like taken a little bit of time to fix some of the fighters and maybe fix the frame rate it would have been a lot better the next game is a kart racer it's coco i don't know how to say the name correctly if you know in the comments please help me out but it is 
a Mario Kart racer clone where you basically are racing a bunch of carts and you get power-ups and different things objects wise to throw at the other carts. It was an okay racer. It really was a Mario Kart clone, but the carts were not anything different and also the tracks were the same. After so many cups of racing, I was expecting different levels, different things, changes. All it was was the, the racers got harder to, to beat and that was it. And so by the end of it, I'm like really dragging along. I want to finish it off and see if there's anything different from the last race. Like all the cups are not anything too spectacular. So if you can find the game for cheap, I recommend it. But if you see it for really lo a large amount of money, don't spend a lot. <laughs> Just like this game's worth about $15. If you want like a time waster, get the game. But it's not a horrible racer, it's just like, I've seen this racer before, I just got kind of tired of all the tracks being the same, and them just being either longer track versions, or really just, they would just add more tracks. So it would be like, first races would be like five races, tracks, and stuff like that, and then it just like, add another track. And then, so you'd race the first five, and then you get like a six, and then the next cup will be the same. So, again, okay racer if you need some time wasting. The next game was on the Switch and this is called Summer Days. This is a novel choose your adventure kind of game where it's it's kind of like a romance game where you get a chance to romance the characters. They're supposed to be your co-workers, they're actresses as well, but I didn't really like the endings. I mean, what's the point of trying to romance somebody if you really can't romance them or do anything? Like there was, I thought there was gonna be multiple endings, that's why I tried to get multiple endings, and really this, like, the endings are shit, the dialogue's okay, it's not a great game, like I paid like a couple bucks for it, <laughs> so it was on a sale, I like had some money to burn, because I bought a game, um, and then I was like, okay, well, what can else can I play, because I'm really, I got, I hate when you have like a couple bucks on the, on your thing, and you see a sale, and you're like, I'll just try this game, it's only a couple dollars. Not even worth a couple bucks. If it's free, grab it, but don't pay any more money for this game. It is not worth it. Game I played, I've been playing for a couple months now, maybe four or five months. It is Tetris, but type B version. So t type A is endless and it just keeps going and you try to get as high as level as you can. But type B is there's levels and it's got a storyline. Not really a well i mean there's a storyline but it's like you get to see like little characters doing something in the level at the end but i recommend it if you do have switch online they have tetris i like playing tetris just to like stress level go down kind of situation where you like work was a little eh, let me go do this so it was a fun time um i highly recommend it if you do have tetris even on the regular game boy try that version out a lot of people don't really play Type B that much, but if you have the time, play a couple levels. It is difficult. It is not easy. That's why it took me like four months to beat it because I really never tried as a kid. Like I would play a couple levels, call it a day, go back to Type A because I just want to do the endless loop. But it'll give you a challenge if you need it. At the game Batman: The Telltale Series. This I wanted to play for a little while and I saw it was on sale so I grabbed a few bucks for funds and put it on my Switch and I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. It's just like any other Telltale game where you are the main character which you are Batman and you hear the story a little bit different. It's still the same. His parents pass away, he becomes Batman and you deal with whatever character is going on at that time. You're battling Catwoman, Penguin, you're battling Two-Face and Joker, but they're a little bit different in this world. Um, you meet Joker in the same asylum, you meet Catwoman, you kind of befriend her in this version. Uh, Penguin does not look like Penguin from the 90s movie. He is slender and tall and your friend, your childhood friend. So it's a little bit different, not too bad. I do recommend it if you have the Telltale series like add this to your collection. This is another game that's worth your time. I know it's on sale, so I don't know how long the sale's gonna go on for, but I know there's a second season. Definitely wanna play that when I can get a chance to, and 
and see what happens next. Then after that, I played a game that is an Oregon Trail inspired game, and that is the 2020 Trail. This one is very, very real to 2020. So if you don't want a game that is super real and what I was shocked by in, in, in a good way was they were very detailed. Like you could look it up and say, oh yeah, this did happen this month for 2020. And basically you are a character who's trying to survive 2020 and you can either be a frontline worker or a behind the scenes worker and you have to go in, do shopping, get different things, help out your grandma. You Basically, it's day-to-day -day mundane, keep your mood up. That's the main goal, keep your mood up and your health up. And you just have to survive the whole calendar year. I did that, I had a okay time with it. The art style was a little different. I didn't expect the art style to be the way it was. You kind of look like a potato head <laughs> with, with uh, no arms. And you play um, a bunch of games where you go skateboarding outside to keep your mood up, which I did like that, those two modes. And then eventually you get a mode where you can start cooking. And then when you get the ingredients from the store, you have to make whatever you can. And each meal makes a different thing. Sometimes it'll like boost your immune system for a week. Other times it will give you a bubble that will protect you when you go grocery shopping. I liked it. It's actually free on PC, so if you want to try it out, it's free, you don't have to pay anything. I know it's been on Steam for a while, I just never found it, and then I saw it and I was like, oh, I, I need to play this because I am all about Oregon Trail, and any inspired Oregon Trail game is for me. So if you find it, definitely try it out, it's right up your alley if you're into educational games. I will say though, not everything is humorous, so if you put somebody's name down, you will not just see like dysentery and stuff like that. You'll see like legit diseases from 2020. So highly recommend not to put anybody's name down. <laughs> I just put like cartoon characters and, and Disney characters for that. So another Oregon Trail game for you to try out. And did another fighter and that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters for the Super Nintendo. This game is brutal. This game is hard as hell don't know why on normal it is the worst like difficulty i've ever seen it goes from normal spike and then all of a sudden just shoots up to like the second or third fighter it's just ridiculously hard it took me forever to get through the last like two three fighters or whatever i don't know how anybody like can just burn through this game if you can burn through this game fast you are a beast that's all i have to say about that like this is one of the fighters that I, I'm just needing to practice more and get better at it because, whoa, just whoa, that's all I have to say about that because I didn't even know when the ending was going to happen so I just kept playing and playing and playing and playing and then I was like, oh, I'm finally done. Like, I felt relief. That's, <laughs> that's when you know a fighter like took you out. It's when you're like, I'm finally done. This is the last one, right? This is the last person, right? To fight? Okay. <laughs> so, great, great fighter. Just the difficulty is really really up there so just fair warning if you never play this if you have the Kamabunga collection and you just want to pop it in don't do it if you're not having a good day you're in a rage for sure the game that i played was fast and furious spy racers rise of shifter and shifter is spelled with letters and numbers for anybody who uh, knows about that era that we had in the early 2000s 2010s where people would add numbers and then the number is silent just say the word like it's regular or just whatever this is for the ps4 it's supposed to be fast and furious for the teenagers basically the characters are toretto and everybody that is known in the fast and furious world but the kids so you're playing as the kids and teenagers and you're going and there's this woman who she's like okay everybody we gotta battle this person mind you this racer is very easy um i would bump up the difficulty because i played it on normal and had no no issues so the racers will be given a specific person a target who's going to be the main person that's going to be giving you a difficult time that person didn't give me a difficult time the other racers did but not really this one 
and the racing is a combination of Mario Kart meets Splatoon. So it's kind of like Mario Kart where you're racing and you'll pick up different objects and power-ups and you will be able to, like, uh, you have a meter that has to get to a full and then you can start dropping stuff onto there and then it looks like Splatoon because it's like spray cans and stuff like that and then you'll just get color on the screen. The only thing that was weird was they kept trying to make it epic by having you burn through barriers, hit walls, hit different things, because you're like, I think they're trying to confuse people who've never done a racer before or who would find this fun and entertaining. It really didn't add to the story, it really didn't help anything. All it did was just, you're like, oh, going through another wall, okay, cool. Like. It's one of those games where it's just trying too hard to make it epic and it just kind of fell flat. So if you are playing this game, get it on Game Pass, play it, have a good time with it, but don't expect the best racer you've ever seen before. It's gonna be a game where you're just like, I beat the game, I finished all the story missions, cool. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna have an epic battle with the last racer and be done with it, but at the end of the day, it's just a normal racer. There's nothing special about it. It's a good time if you get it on Game Pass, but don't spend full price for it. Don't pay $30, $40 for this game. It is 10 games that I beat for the month. Let me know. How was your month? Did you have a good time? Did you see any games that like really stood out for you? Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate everybody for checking out the video. If you like the content, give it a like. If you're new, check out a couple other videos, give me a sub if you feel like it, it helps out the channel, and I'll catch you next time. Bye everybody! Linda the Gamer Gal, she's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal, she's here, she's playing games.